I'm having a really good conversation with Carol Siegel about art and uh, her artistic background. Carol, welcome. Thank you. We were talking a little while ago, and you were telling us all the things that happened in your life and your job that led to you being an artist. Can you talk to us about that? Everybody wants to know. Sure. Okay. Well, um, a good number of years ago, let's see, 45 years ago, I was offered a position with a company. It's called Dimensions, and it was to create high-end artistic uh, needlecraft kits. Cruel embroidery, needlepoint, cross-stitch. And I was offered a job to come and write instructions and help run the design department. And it was a brand new company and I took a leap and I moved here from New York and with my five-year-old. And we managed to do what we promised ourselves we would do and take all this really great art and turn it into really nice kits. And we got a great reception at the trade shows and the company grew and over the course of that time I became a senior executive VP of product development which meant I was in charge of all of the components that went into the kit which included coming up with the idea or approving the ideas if I didn't come up with them um, the line plans we called them and then finding the artists to create the art we would license art from all different artists including in-house people and I would travel the country working with these artists and then the in-house people would translate the painting into a chart or the or the the uh, drawing necessary to turn it into a, a kit. So I did that for a long time and I loved it and I'm very proud of what we did. Um, and then uh, came time to retire and I was then taking care of my elderly mother who was about a hundred at that point. So she had a nice long life. She did. <laughs> she did. And. Um, about that time, I went to Goggle Works and was, was uh, volunteering for their arts festival. And I happened to go into the ceramic studio there and got talking to the manager. And I've always liked to get my hands in stuff, you know, whether, whether it's paint or clay or whatever. It was really intriguing to me that I could do what I like to do, which, which is drawing people, and I could actually do it in three dimensions. So. I became a renter and I started playing uh, and learning the basics of how to do figurative sculpture, often life-size heads, busts, uh, sometimes figures, but typically I was always fascinated by the face. Mm -hmm. um, doing and this I, in clay. And I was doing this in clay and then um, learning how you have to scoop out the excess because I wasn't molding them. So I would fire them and then I would bring them home and paint them or stain them or finish them to a point that they were finished because you can't really glaze the detail that I would put in a face. If you glaze it, it's like melted glass and it would just get rid of all the details. Mm -hmm. So I tried that on something and I learned that really quickly that that wasn't going to work. So anyway, I you know, became really dedicated to this and, and thought that was it. I found my niche, you know, I was going to do that until I hopefully lived another, a long life like my mother. And then look what happened. So what uh, happened was COVID. 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 And at first I have to say, I didn't, I didn't realize how long it would last and how I wouldn't have access to my, to what I need. Um, basically to deal with the stress of this nonsense. I mean, it's just been mm -hmm. such a crazy year. So when I started to realize that I wasn't going to get back to clay, Goggleworks was completely closed and it was going to be for months, um, I started, you know, I started like cooking and doing what people do, you know, and then drawing a little bit and not really, I mean, I was just sketching. I wasn't doing anything serious. I hadn't really found a, a spot. So you were looking for something and you really did feel some internal anxiety Absolutely. because you were not able to go to the Goggle Works yeah. and produce the things that you right. enjoyed producing. Well, under normal circumstances, I'm enjoying working in clay because I don't, I'm not one of a person who wakes up anxious, but I, I am that person now. I mean, I just think this is an awful time and you know so many things have happened since March 
um, that I was motivated to express myself and I didn't have the opportunity to do that. And everybody was passing the time watching Netflix. <laughs> and everybody was constantly making suggestions about what I should be watching and binge watching things. And I've never been really good with that. I've missed a lot of really good programs because I don't like to sit mm -hmm. still and just watch things. I, I just, I don't know why exactly, but it just didn't do it for me. So what was I watching? I didn't really want to watch the news. At some point I was up to here with that. So I started watching HGTV and that, <laughs> and that was, that the creativity of that, of that was really fun for me to see what people can do with color and texture and everything. And then I obviously needed to do some art. So I, I have a painting that I bought uh, from somebody I've never met online and I looked at the painting that she that she well what she had said she did it in oil paint and cold mm -hmm. wax oh, I wonder what that is so I looked on YouTube and I discovered what cold wax is so you turned to YouTube yes cool and I found one artist I will give her credit Linton Linda Benton McCloskey who's very generous and has a lot of uh, YouTube videos where she just puts a camera basically over her shoulder and paints and talks about what she's doing as she's doing it without a plan without a I mean she doesn't the way I would do things realistically like oh I'm gonna do you know a drawing a painting here's the layout it would be very methodical or if I was doing sculpture I would often say I just start with a hunk of clay create the shape of a skull and then as I'm doing that, it kind of tells me what it wants to be. Does it want to be male or female, or does it want to be young or old? And it was really fun to just kind of let that happen and then bring it out. Listen to the medium, and the medium speaks to you. Yes, and it was really fun when people would say, well, how did you come up with that? I said, I didn't come up with that idea. It kind of came up on its own, and, and I just followed it. So the idea that she was painting with that same open-minded lack of plan, and she was saying that over and over again. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Let me just try it. I think I'll try this color. I think I'll do this. I think I'll do that. If it doesn't work, I'll paint over it. It really gave me permission to experiment, and I, I, have, I have to give her a lot of credit specifically, because I looked at a lot of them, but she's the one that kind of gave me permission to just say, just get some canvas and some paint, and play and now you're not dealing with gray mud now you're dealing with color and the idea I did buy the cold wax and I, I had some oil paints and I bought a few more colors and then I started mix it what you do is you mix the two together you lay out all your colors and you put cold wax in each one it's very creamy like mm -hmm. mayonnaise what you end up with is like mayonnaise but gorgeous colors of mayonnaise and then she had some tools, and I looked around and found some more tools that you, that you use to apply it to the canvas. And the, I guess in a way, it appealed to me because it did give me that same feeling that I have with clay where you're, you know, it's... You're molding something. Yeah, you are, and you're doing the same thing with the cold wax and layering color on top of color digging into it, creating texture. It was just so appealing to me for all the same reasons that clay is appealing to me, except the end result was completely different. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I started early on with really colorful things and I thought, oh my God, look at that, you know, clay is gray. And then when I finish my clay, I typically just put like a wash over it. I don't paint it realistically. If I do paint it, I do it, um, like I have these little bathing beauties that I did, three little like torsos as mm -hmm. if they were in a pool together. And I painted them a neutral color and then I painted, and they had, have old fashioned bathing caps with the textures. And each of them have a different pastel look to them, but it's all very muted. So this became like a celebration of color. So on a bad day, it's really fun to have all that color to cheer you up. So. COVID brings into your life a, a new awareness of color? Yes. Or, uh, and yes. This, the colors here are stunning. Can you take us through what we're looking at here a little bit? Okay, sure. This one, um, 
again, oil and cold wax. You lay out, I laid out lots of bright colors. And I just allowed myself to be free and used, you know, when, when an area needed something, I put it there. And, and there are many layers of color underneath. Again, that not, not much of a plan, you know, I like circles, and then they looked a little too perfect, so I messed them up, I scratched into them. This is uh, some texture that I laid down first in a few places, and I just kept going until it was more and more exciting to me. It became just more and more fun, and there's a second one uh, like this also, because I was having so much fun with the bright colors that I just... I kept going. So on the one hand, you're working with the colors and you lay those out first, so you select the colors, so you discover those. Then you're also working with the image and again, it's a, it's a process of discovering over time. Absolutely, and it's over days. So, and because this is oil, it doesn't dry right away. So you can work on it, come back the next day, you, it's, it, you've still got the possibility of creating texture in it. Um, but it's set up enough that you can layer other colors on top without creating mud. And, and there, but there are certain, um, there's a tool that I, again, Linda taught me about, and I see a lot of uh, abstract painters using this. It's actually a bowl scraper. Mm. It's, a, it's a silicone wedge that has a, a curve like this that you would scoop out a bowl. Mm -hmm. So it's literally a cooking tool. And then it's got a straight edge. And I use that in, in many cases to smooth out the colors. Again, very much, wow, <laughs> you know, exciting. it wasn't with a brush necessarily. It was in my hand and I was moving, it, moving the color around. I, I don't, you know, I didn't realize until I started saying this how similar it is to clay. Hmm. Because with clay, I'm just using, if I'm not using my hands, I'm using a wedge tool um, that's more rigid but I'm dragging the clay around as well. But so I was, you're discovering in our interview that you do things similarly, yeah, whether it's clay or painting. I actually you've got a process about, that's your own process. Yeah, what a great thing that yeah. is. What about the other two paintings? They are so different from each other. Well, and that's part of the fun of this is, okay, I did two really colorful ones. I Now I want to do a neutral one. And uh, so I'm just going to work with really neutral colors and a lot of white and off-white and again, texture. What I did, I painted the canvas black, I laid in areas of color, and then I took a clay tool. <laughs> it actually is a clay tool meant for clay, and I drew into the paint while it was still wet um, so that I could create all the, uh, the design. and. I love it, actually. I really love that one. Can you tell us how long it took to make this painting? I don't know in terms of hours, but I would say um, several days, let's say a week of coming in a few hours every day, and then I let it sit, and then I went back and did a little more. The idea of the advantage of oil to me over acrylic is that it does not dry hard immediately so that you can play with it that way. Um, and I think I probably stuck with that one uh, for that reason, so that if it had gotten too dry, I wouldn't have been able to continue. But each time I came back to it, um, I drew more, I added a little bit of color to, to get the balance, but then I drew more little interesting things and I use this tool thick and thin and it's like oh look what you can do <laughs> and yeah like, like we're saying that's very much what I would do in clay. So you play with it you discover as yeah. time goes by can you tell us about yeah. the portrait? All right so now I'm escaping for some reason escaping color and I was drawing um, part of what I was doing because I have the studio set up, I have so many different things going on at once. You know, if it's a room this big, I've got three easels and a drawing table and a big work table, and uh, and I go from one to the other. So you've got different uh, projects happening. Yes, at the same but I mean, time. if it's something wet like this, I'm kind of going back to it. But I have a pad, a, a newsprint pad, on an easel, 
and almost every night I would go in there with charcoal and I would draw and the idea was trying to get more and more free and trying to do things a little bit differently. And I kind of liked the black and white drawings that I was getting and then I would add a little color in the background and but I kind of liked the, what was happening with the black and white. And so now I'm painting. I, so I decided to try to do a painting that was not going to, to realism, but just trying to do something in black and white. And um, I drew that out of my head. And then I went looking for a photograph that gave me a little more information about the highlights and shadows. So it isn't a portrait of anyone, it's mostly Mostly it's just you and me, kid. I don't know. Something about the way she's looking out. Um, maybe it was the way I was feeling. I don't know. The other one, the other figurative one I have out there is very much a reaction to what was happening in the news. Um, this one is more internal. Mm -hmm. But I chose to do it in black and white, perhaps as, a, as kind of a a link from the one to the other, you know. Sure, sure. Not sure. really clay, not really painting, but I got the feeling I wanted. So you're very versatile, working with clay, doing kind of a literal portrait that's creative, that that looks like a real person that you might have been mm -hmm. painting. Mm -hmm. You've got abstract things going on. How do you balance it all in your mind, in your imagination? How does your imagination work to create these various things? First of all, I tried to not try. I tried to eliminate um, all the things. I, I, I try not to spread myself too thin, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So what I try to do now that I've discovered painting, I do want to paint. Now I'm back to goggle works and I'm working in clay. Um, so I have to make time to paint because I'm now reserving space there. I get so much pleasure from both things that I, I just hope I live a long life and I get to just keep playing, basically. I, I'm not going to start a third thing. I'm just going to be, you know, between the painting and, and something like this and then these, these more abstract pieces. To me, I can do either one, whatever I'm in the mood for, and then just balance that with the clay. Do you anticipate maybe exhibiting clay and paintings in a... In a, in a a sim in a common exhibit in, in actually maybe one I'm, show. Ha I'm, uh, s I'm having a show here of my sculpture in the spring it was supposed to be this past May and it got canceled mm -hmm. obviously and now there's the possibility that beyond um, clay I might have some paintings hung next May I'm keeping myself busy I think uh, it's good for my head to make sure that I do something constructive, and um, I'm working on some sculpture that I was having a bad week last week, and I was just so angry. I was so fed up with everything that's going on in the world, and I was like, "How did how so did your anger manifest itself I in what you were working on?" Two at? sculptures of two different heads, two women screaming, screaming, mouth open, eyes, yeah, and. I kind of laughed at how somebody in the studio was saying, oh my God, I, I've never seen you work like this. I was like, <laughs> so I was putting a lot of the anger in the one and I thought, all right, that, that felt a little good, but now I want to do more. So I did a second one and I might do a third one. It, it was just a way of getting out some, I was overflowing with anger as opposed to like this kind of feeling. So when I'm like this, then I go, uh, you know, what, what's going to make me feel better? And any kind of art will make me feel better. So if I'm painting or drawing or if I'm going and working in clay, I get involved in it. My mind is focused on it. I feel good about what is happening in front of me, typically, usually. <laughs> but, you know, last week I was just well, this got is very the interesting because right now in the United States there and around the world globally, certainly the pandemic is making people, our lives are too restrained and too controlled. We can't do the things that we want, so anger develops. In the United States, we've got a lot going on with racism and violence and issues related to police and Black Lives Matter. Yeah. So there's a lot of anger there. And then we live in politically tense times where there's a lot of anger. 
Is the anger maybe you're expressing what's going on around you, that it's just coming out? Maybe you are a kind of a, a conduit for expressing things. Maybe. I'm not, yeah, it, yeah, I like to think of it that way as opposed to something that's consuming me. But I, I think it's hard to avoid. And I think it does boil over sometimes because if you pay enough attention to the news, and you, if you really think about, and I'd like to be informed, and so I'm reading and watching, and yeah, it, it can get, it, it can, can get, get overwhelming. Tense. It can but, um, be overwhelming. So, you know, cheer up or, but I, I, I probably will do more with sculpture. There's something about the clay that I can, work, you know, I can do something with. And I think that if I could have those two pieces done, um, in terms of this show is about the pandemic, if I could have finished those, I, I don't think I can fire them. They're still wet and they need to dry and then get fired and then finished. But I think they would have been a good uh, part of my little display here because I think that is part of what we're all feeling. It's true. I'm not the only one. I know that. It's easy to admit it because the anxiety and the anger has to be common. Yeah, and it has to be expressed. Yeah. I've got this question. So. I'm trying to figure out what an artist is or what an artist thinks an artist is about herself or himself or just artists generally. Are you an artist and what do you think about what artists are and what they do and how they be? Okay, I feel that I've owned being an artist, which I didn't used to. I think it's one of those things that people think, well, I can't say I'm an artist unless I'm, you know, an artist art. No, I think I think it's a way of being. I think it's a way of seeing the world. And if you are lucky enough to have the talent or the ability or the materials or the time or whatever that you can devote to it and you can actually create anything worthy that makes you an artist. But I think if you are an artist, I see the sky, I see flowers, I garden. I stare at my flowers. I have a little patio now. I stare at my flowers and the color of them and the way the light hits them. So I'm always looking at the world through the eyes of a visual artist. It's always a visual artist. I am not that great with words. I'm not that great with music. But visually, I am always finding interesting patterns and colors and the way the light is hitting things all the time. And so I hope that I can stick around a lot longer because I feel like I'm now discovering ways to take that and put it out. You mentioned just a moment ago that if a person has the talent, and you were talking about an artist, what inspiration can you give people who are discovering their artistic talent? They might art discover it when they're newly figuring out what they want to do, right. or they might discover it later in life. Are there tricks for discovering talent? What I absolutely know. If you have any interest at all in being an artist, I know that it's possible to become a, a decent artist, and here's how you do it. You, you can watch YouTube videos, take classes, take workshops, devote yourself until you find maybe maybe scatter a little bit until you find what really feels natural to you. But it's a matter of time. It's a matter of practice. That whole 10,000 hours concept is who knows how many I've done, but I'm not, I don't think I'm anywhere close to that. But I think I've gotten better and better. And I've seen examples of people who drew in high school and really loved art and tried to draw something. And then five years later, they draw the same thing and it's like night and day. It's a matter of practice and it's a matter of paying attention and learning. And if you continue to learn, you can figure it out. If you want to draw people, you can figure it out. I often say, I could teach you how to draw a face. I can tell you what to look for and you'll just keep getting better and better at it. I have a friend who is a retired doctor and I think might have been inspired by my sculpture, I'd like to think, and started taking classes in sculpture. And he's loving it, and he's getting better at it, and he's painting, and he's getting better at it. So part of it is the desire. You give us a really good lesson, because you know a lot of people, I don't think, can acknowledge I'm getting better and better and better. Maybe there's a false sense of humble humility or whatever. Yeah. But I really enjoy hearing you be able, confidently, to recognize that you are achieving things and you're being successful. Yes, thank you, yeah. 
feels good to do that. It feels good, good to good, acknowledge good. it and to own it. Good. Well, thank you so much for this great oh, interview. Thank you. It's been this wonderful is great. Chatting. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thank you.